Um, hello there, YouTube viewers. I just want to do a, a quick video here on um, on the basic operation of of a flybarless unit on a helicopter, uh, RC helicopter. Um, you know, I've, I've seen some people have questions about you know how the servos move compared to their transmitter and why they do certain things they do, and, and you just clear up a little bit of doubts about it. Um, so most most of my experience is based on the uh, the Spectrum AR seventy two hundred BX and then uh, the Line three GX unit. Um, they they tend to operate fairly similarly in their you know their their basic ideas of how they work. Um, but I'm not going to get too far into you know all the other ones out there because I really don't know and I haven't played with them to to try and figure them out. So basically, what you have is you know you have your flybarless unit that you install and. Normally, you you change the you know the rotor head and and a lot of the you know the swash links and all that stuff to get rid of the, the fly bar itself, the actual mechanical fly bar, and then you install a similar box to one of these. Now this is the uh, like I said, it's the AR seventy two hundred BX with the uh, built in receiver, so a very very clean install. They're, all the servos plug in directly to here, and uh, there's no extra wires for for really anything that's not really needed. So basically, what happens with these these fly bar units or the fly barless unit is there's three gyros inside one gyro you know is for the yaw for the tail another gyro is for your left and right roll and then there's another gyro for your front and back pitch and what you do with your transmitter is when you um, when you do an input on your transmitter you're not actually you're not actually controlling the servos directly you're actually just telling this box how fast to roll pitch or yaw in a certain like a certain direction like roll forward roll back or sorry roll left roll right pitch forward pitch back and then yaw left yaw right um so when you do an input on your transmitter you're basically only giving it how many degrees per second you want it to to roll at the further you push your stick the faster it'll roll uh these boxes have a maximum roll rate i don't know exactly what the amount is i think it's like five or six hundred degrees a second or something like that that the gyros can actually sense where they can see that that fast of a rotation anything faster than that they won't see it so usually these boxes are limited to that that max rotation speed uh, i could be wrong on the specs i haven't looked them up but i think i read it somewhere it was the maybe the 3gx was 600 degrees but either way just keep in mind that you know the box only rolls so fast and when you do a stick input you're telling it how fast you want to change this helicopter, how it's sitting, how fast, and then how long you hold the stick for will give you how far it actually goes, how many degrees it actually rolls to the, uh, you know, rolls or pitches or yaws or whatever. So, if you think of it this way, basically there's a little helicopter that gets drawn inside this box. Okay? For layman's terms. It draws a helicopter in there. And what this box does is, it looks at the helicopter that's drawn inside and then it compares you know the fake imaginary helicopter to the real one that you're flying around in the world so we're gonna put this helicopter down so that this one you know that's how it looks we're flat and level on the table or we're flat and level flying and let's say a big gust of wind comes up and all of a sudden it, it tries to blow your helicopter like that the gyros in the box see that the real helicopter tilted over so it'll imply inputs until it matches, you know, the way the image is inside the box. And it'll keep adjusting all the time as the, as the wind gusts, like it doesn't, not this drastic, but it'll keep adding adjustments so that the helicopter always matches the one you have drawn inside the flybarless unit. And that's basically what it does. It's always comparing to the image inside. So... That's basically how it works. The driver will sense the movement, see that, oh, it's moving away from, from where it's supposed to be, and then it adds, it does input on your, on your swash plate or your tail rotor to get these two to match at all times. Um, now, when you do an input, for example, with your transmitter, you're telling your little imaginary helicopter here to roll at whatever rate, let's say you push your stick Let's just say you push your stick a quarter of the way and it'll, it'll rotate at 45 degrees a second. And you hold it for one second. So let's say you're on the ground, nothing's moving. You're sitting on the ground, no blade spinning, nothing, nothing's, nothing's spinning. Helicopter's powered up though, the flybarless is actually on. 
and you hold your stick for one second, it'll rotate that helicopter at 45 degrees a second for one second, which should get you to 45 degrees. So what the fly barless unit does is it starts applying input now because oh, all of a sudden we're, we're no longer lined up. So it starts applying inputs to your swash to start rolling the helicopter in that direction. And then when these two helicopters line up, it'll stop putting the input in. And the same with the, you know, the, uh, the pitch front to back and then the yaw left and right. When, when you're on the ground and this little imaginary helicopter tilts like that and you let your stick go and it's like that, because the real helicopter isn't actually rotating at all, it keeps adding input into your swash plate because it doesn't know what the conditions are like outside. All it knows is you want it to, ro to rotate at 45 degrees a second. So what happens is when you're on the ground and you do a stick input, if the helicopter doesn't actually roll, as you'll see, I'll do it with my transmitter here. Now I'm going to push my stick to the left so the swash to you guys is going to roll to the right. Okay, it's actually left in the helicopter. We're looking at it from the front, but don't get confused with it rolling this way and I'm pushing the stick, you know, left and it should be the other way, but it's actually correct. So I'm just going to do a really small little input on my transmit here, like very, very tiny. And you guys will see the swash plate. It'll start to tilt and it'll keep tilting. It'll go all the way to the end. So here we go. You see it moving there and it's still going and it's still going and now it's stopped. That's basically our, our servo end, li end limit. We can't travel the servos any further than that, so it, it, it stops. It, it can't do anything else. And the reason it goes all the way to the end is because the helicopter's not actually rotating. So, examples of one that will make a difference is, let's say you're, um, you're flying along and you do a left input, but at the exact same time, a great big gust of wind comes from this direction and, and tries to blow the helicopter that way. So let's say all this input it's, it's putting in isn't doing anything because the wind is, is trying to push over the exact same time you're putting the input in. It keeps adding servo input to try and get it to rotate at the 45 degrees a second. It's, it's kind of like double fighting itself, right? So that's why you have the full travel. When you, when you do just minor little input, it'll go all the way until the helicopter actually starts rotating. Now, if I could actually, by hand, rotate this helicopter at, you know, that whatever rotation rate I can select here in my transmitter, if I could actually roll it that fast, you would see the swash actually only does just a tiny, tiny little bit of movement. Very, very little. And then, while it's rolling, this is another thing that's kind of neat about fly barless too. They, always, they almost always maintain a consistent roll rate, regardless of the wind or any kind of other, you know, other factors. When you're, well, let's pretend this camera is like bolted to the helicopter and we're flying and I do a roll to the left at 45 degrees a second. What you'll see the swash plate do is, as you're rolling, it'll just keep doing things like this. As, you know, like just constantly adjusting little things here and there because it, let's say it's changing the speed of the roll because wind or, or let's say, you know, you got a gust one from the tail that tries to, to pitch nose forward while you're in the middle of rolling it. It'll automatically adjust everything out to try and keep it in the exact same attitude that you're telling it to do in your transmitter. Um, it's, it simplifies a lot of the controls because it's not all bouncing around and doing all kinds of funky things where you, you constantly have to adjust it and keep it exactly where you want it. The fly barless unit does that for you. It tries its best to keep the helicopter in the exact orientation that you set it when, you, when you're flying around in, in, you know, up in the sky. You know, your inputs set how you want this helicopter to be and so that brings me to another point also is these fly barless units when you're flying them they do not auto correct meaning if you pitch the helicopter let's say you're flying you, you pitch it nose forward like that and then you're flying along like that it'll stay like that it, it won't automatically correct itself it won't automatically level it'll stay in whatever attitude you put it in it gives it a very um I guess you can say locked in feeling. Uh, gusts of winds come up, it'll always try and control and stay there at all times. No matter how you have it set, it'll just stay there. Um, there really are a dream to fly in any kind of like really gusty winds. Um, you still get the kind of bouncing up and down, 
on the you know on your on your collective axis like you're straight up and down but you see very very little movement away from where you you know you want the helicopter to be to be uh, to be pitched to or you know its attitude its attitude in the sky uh, there are limits to it though obviously like you know if, if it's trying to correct and you hit your servo you know travel limits then it's it's gonna blow over but it, it'll try and, and get it back to where it was now if you're if you're new to, to fly barless and, and you're concerned about let's say your takeoffs and stuff and you know a lot of people say oh you know don't do any inputs when you're on the ground or whatever well you just seen here with the with this particular spectrum unit that if you do an input on the ground and you just let your stick go it levels out if you do it the other way you let your stick go it levels out now I'm not exactly sure in the uh, AR 7200 BX here if what setting there is or if if there's any settings that change it I've been playing with it a bit but I haven't really found um, a, like a direct correlation between a setting on this box and how quickly this levels but the, the faster that it it levels from you know any any out of you know you know any, any variation between how you you want the helicopter to be to how it actually the, hel the helicopter actually is like the the slower it it corrects back to, to line everything up the better the helicopter flies and tracks in any kind of wind like if you're doing high speed forward flight or something like that any little gusts of wind that come up the slower that this corrects for the more positively it'll stay in the direction you pointed in. Um, the faster you have it level, then you know it'll feel a little bit more sloppy. Where it'll, it'll kind of you know gust of winds. It'll kind of drift off a little bit. Um, I've been playing with it a bit in this uh, in this unit and on my 3GX, and I haven't really noticed any huge. You know, I don't want to say benefits. You know, if you're like a big 3D guy or something, or an expert helicopter pilot, which I'm not, uh, you might be able to tell the difference between it. But I, I can't really myself. But uh, just as long as you, you look at it when you're sitting on the ground, if you're worried about it, just have a look. And if the swash levels out, and you're worried about doing inputs on in the ground, well, if you do, just, just give yourself a minute. You know, not a minute, but give it a couple of seconds to level everything out. You know, you can kind of see it from the back of the helicopter if you're standing somewhat close. Just yeah, have a quick look and see if it's somewhat leveled, and if it is, then then try and take it off. Um, it's it's nothing really to be afraid of. It's uh, once you once you get it off the ground, you'll see it, it's very very locked in and stable. Um, flies like a dream. The winds don't really blow it around that much. Like depending on your gain settings, if you've got lower gains, you'll see it. It, it kind of bounces around, but it all it always hangs around the you know the kind of attitude that it, it's supposed to be and that you set with your with your transmitter sticks when you're flying. Um, what else? You want to try and be careful of doing any inputs when you're just about to lift off. Like if you're on the ground, you have your blades spooled up and you're you're really close to lifting off, but the skids are still on the ground. You don't want to do any input to try and counteract the. Um, I forget what they call it, where the the tail blows the helicopter in one direction, so it always wants to kind of be pitched this way when you're flying, because you know you're counteracting the tail thrust. Try not to do that until you actually get it off the ground. A uh, helicopter this size doesn't really take off sideways that fast. You can get it up in the ground and then you just kind of bump your stick right quick. Just give a little bit of input and then it, it straightens out. But the best way is to, if you're going to take off, try not to give any inputs on your, on your cyclic whatsoever um, to get it off the ground. Uh, another thing you want to check too is when, I don't know if you know, regular tail drivers are the same way, but when you're on the ground and you know everything's spinning, Look at your tail blades to see how fat they are. If, um, let's see if I can do this here with the transmitter. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, if, okay, it's not gonna stay, I don't think. Okay, there we go. So if you're spooling up and you see the blades look kind of fat, just, you can bump your transmitter around till it look fairly thin. And what that's gonna save you is, nope. This is the helicopter spinning out on the ground when you're trying to take off. So if they look fairly flat like that when you're trying to take off, you don't have to worry too much about the tail, you know, blowing out on you or anything like that. But if, if you're spinning them up and they look, you know, something like this. Let me see if I can spin it again here without hitting the blades this time. You know, if they look kind of fat like that when you're spinning up, then you might want to, you know, try and center your rudder stick just a little bit to get them centered out. Or what I like to do is I flip my gyro off my gyro on a, on a switch. 
And I just flip it into rate mode for a quick, sec quick second and that centers up the, uh, the tail so it's not going to do any funky things on you. Alright, so that's the basic gist of it anyways. Um, I'm going to get into, um, I'm going to do another video on, on setting these, this B-Stacks up. Uh, the amount I've been playing with it, I found out a lot of good stuff about it and I think I can come to a layman's terms of what all the settings in the box do. Uh, there's lots of videos on how to set these up, but they don't really explain what everything does. So, and then how you actually check for it and what it'll do when you're flying. So I, I you know, I've noticed a few things when I was flying it. I've been playing with the settings and stuff, and uh, hopefully I can I can get some layman's terms out of it so that uh, maybe some other new beginners on flybarless flybarless units we might help them with uh, with setting theirs up to to fly the best they can. So, um, anyways, that's, uh, that's all i got to say on that. Again, this is just basic ideas of how it works, or basic opinions on my part. And uh, hopefully it helps and, uh, and uh, sheds any, shed some light on, uh, on flybarless units for you. Thanks for watching.